Hello everyone, I'm Jerry Burge, and today it's my pleasure to interview Lou Wiseman, a U.S. Navy veteran. Lou, welcome. Thank you. We've got to get more acquainted here if we can, and we're going to find out all we can about Lou Wiseman, the veteran, eventually, but right now let's just find out where you were born and your, all about your family. Where were you born, Lou? In uh, West Bedroom of my parents' home in Boone Township in uh, Du Bois County. Du Bois County. County, down around Ireland or yeah, up north, there, of north of Ireland in Boone Township. <clears throat> a lot of good people come from Boone Township. I had the pleasure of going to school with a lot of them. They were good people in Boone and you're certainly one of them. Do you have any, who are your parents? Frank and Emma. Weiss. Frank and Emma. And what about siblings? Do you have a big family? Uh, there were five of us. I had uh, Albert was my oldest brother. Fred was next. And uh, Martha was third, and I was fourth, and Mary is still alive. She's number five. Were uh, Albert or Fred in service as, as you were? Albert was in World War II, and Fred was, uh, he, he was in service, but not during wartime. He was fortunate. He's like me. I always say I was uh, too young for Korea and too old for Vietnam, mm -hmm. you know, so I was uh, in between there, but you certainly served. You did serve uh, for the Navy. But uh, where did you go to school then? If you were in Boone Township, did you go to Ireland or Jasper? Portersville. Went to Portersville, and then into high school where? Jasper. In Jasper High School, class of? 1949. Now, the people that may not know that, the most famous year in Jasper High School history, especially in Indiana, they won the basketball state championship in 1949. Were you there in Indianapolis about the field? No, I didn't get to I bet you were listening on radio, though. Yes. And what a thrill it had to be to be in, uh, in, to be in the same class with Cabby and the whole gang there in 1949. Okay, now you're 18 years old, you graduate from Jasper. Where did you go after that? Did you go to work? I worked on the farm and, and the A and P at the A and P in Jasper okay. down Sixth Street. Okay, so what did you do there? Clerk or grind coffee or what did you do? Yeah, at the you ground a lot of coffee. Eight o'clock, eight o'clock coffee. It sure was. <laughs> so then, when and where did you first think about going into service? Were you drafted, or did you just no, decide I didn't you wanted drafted, to go? But my number was coming close. It was getting close. And so uh, my buddy and I went to Evansville and talked to the recruit, Navy recruiter, and he was a pretty good salesman, I guess, because he signed us up. Was that the first branch of service you checked with was the yeah. Navy? So they did a pretty good job getting you there. Did your buddy go into the Navy with you? We went together. Okay, did you go to Great Lakes or San Diego? Where'd you go? In San Diego. We uh, swore in on April the 1st. April Fool's Day, <laughs> 1952, boarded a troop train, and we had Pullman cars. Man, we had fun, good food all the way out. Took about a week to get to Los Angeles, and uh, had a big time. And then we got to Los Angeles, and we had to unload, and they got to yelling and making us <laughs> line up and wow. see if they hadn't lost anybody. And we knew then that the good there's going to be a different life. The good times are over. <laughs> now, you, you know, since Lou was obviously a farm boy, country boy, yeah. you know, from uh, Boone Township, had you ever ridden on a, a passenger train before? No. Your first trip on a passenger train. That had to be a great experience. Oh, you it was. Enjoy it. Was, it, was there any beer on the train when you headed out? Uh, well, <laughs> not. When, when we had to pick up cars, there might have been a chance. There might have been. And the only reason I'm saying that, <laughs> the area he's from, and I'm from the same area, it's known <laughs> as, and it's like you're in Bavaria, you're in Germany, because when we were little kids, you know, in family functions and everything, you drank beer. We mm -hmm. were all Germans. And, uh, you know, it made a big difference. So you get out west and you get to San Diego. How different was it living in a uh, barracks or living on the farm in Moon Township? What was the biggest difference you found? Well, the dust bunnies were a lot bigger in the <laughs> I know that. <laughs> but uh, the first three weeks we had, they put us out in the desert, close to uh, Miramar Air Base, so that they were bringing in people by the yeah, thousands. Had to find room for you, I guess, then. No, it was mainly for 
in case somebody brought something bad in. Oh, okay. And it was a quarantine period. So how long were you uh, basic three training? Weeks. Three oh, weeks? Oh, uh, that, that and part that, of it was yeah, three weeks. Yeah, moved into town to the Naval Depot. How long were you there? It took eight weeks altogether. And you became a certified U.S. Navy. Bad. What was your, what, I, I never went through the Navy. What's your first uh, rank or your first, uh, you were? Uh, seaman apprentice. Seaman, I was going to say yeah. seaman, you know, seaman apprentice. And then, let's see, what year was that? It was close to Korea then, wasn't it? It was uh, 1952. 1952. And uh, how soon uh, did you end up uh, going into service, going abroad? Oh, that wasn't until 55. So you had three years here. What did you do in those years? Became a better Navy person, I guess. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> We had to do testing, of course, to see what you were qualified for, or best qualified. What were you best qualified for? Uh, office work. Well, that's great. That's I enjoyed great. Mrs. Wilhelmus and Jasper High School. Don't get a type. You bet. And I enjoyed that. Oh, and I was pretty good at it. Well, that's great. So they sent me to Yeoman School. And uh, then for the next three years, I got a new stripe on my birthday every year and I ended up as a uh, Yeoman First Class which is E6. There's E there's seven. E7 is the highest, the highest so yeah. in, in enlisted. So you got That's as high as you can go in four year tour. Uh, tour. Okay so you uh, were E6 Yeoman or uh, yeah. you know, were there? So, Yeoman uh, First Class. Okay that was all in San Diego. Mm -hmm. I meant to bring this up a while ago. I know people I've talked to that have served in any branch of service, they say the tough thing is getting up in the early morning when you hear Reveille and you have to get up early. But being a farm boy, that probably didn't bother you. You would probably slept in later than you did when you were working on the farm. <laughs> uh, except out there in the, in the desert, we had a great big swimming pool and nights were almost down to freezing. Oh, boy. The first thing we did in the morning was go swimming. Boy, that wake you up when I guess that water was nice and chilled and I really wake you up. I didn't like that, but it didn't take me long to pass the test. Oh, excuse me. Okay, here, I just need this. So uh, when you finished your first three years there in San Diego, what was next? What was after San Diego? Or did you spend your whole time in San Diego? On the amphibious space. Describe what that is. Uh, it's in, across the bay in Coronado, California. What did you do with that? Uh, or did they have offices where you could sit there and type, or did I they was, have other duties? They assigned me to uh, Commander Amphibious Training Command Pacific Fleet, which is a two-star admiral. <laughs> that second day after I was there, they handed me a piece of correspondence to take to the Admiral, and I knew he was in the building next door, and uh, I left, and I saw his name above the screen door, the screen door was open, I walked right in. Did not? There, no. Oh, okay. There he sat. <laughs> if I could have, if I could have died then, I'd have been happy. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say, Wiseman, what are you doing here? What no, are you doing here? No, How he did didn't. he handle it? How did he handle it? He told me where to deliver the letter and was very pleasant. <laughs> well, that's good. So there's some good people in there. But you were a little shaken, yeah, I guess, when you boy. first got in there. Oh, boy. <laughs> you remember him, obviously. In your time there at San Diego, are there any officers or, you know, uh, other fellow people in the Navy, uh, fellow sailors that you remember? You remember their names and maybe tell us about how they, you really liked them? Or maybe some of you really didn't like. You don't use names with any of those. But any of them that really came across to you that were had an influence in your life, let's say. Well, they were they were all very pleasant. Any of them particular that stand out? Any of them? The officers? Yeah, the officers that you remember. Uh, I remember one when we were in uh, Japan, uh, Lieutenant. J.G. No, he was a lieutenant. J.P. Laterra. 
from I had attended Columbia University and I was gonna say Saleh's from New York, so yeah, yeah. Columbia's from New York. What do you remember about him? What impressed you the most? Oh, he was just very nice and in fact he had uh, me and another guy come babysit the, their baby. A few times. <laughs> so, well, he must have seen something in you, Lou. You know, they thought, hey, I trust my kids with uh, this sailor here. So uh, a lot of sailors are out carousing, maybe, and you were babysitting. Mm -hmm. Had to make you feel pretty good. That's part of your growing up with mm -hmm. your culture, the German culture, in a small town, or a small town area. That had to have an effect. And uh, any experiences uh, in Japan that you want to tell us about? Uh, first of all, how did you get there? When did you go there and why? And give us the particulars about yeah. that. Flew over. Oh, okay, I figured that. <laughs> you did drive, I know that. Okay. <laughs> but I was in the Navy. That's so. right, you would think you'd take the boat, but uh, yeah, you flew. Uh, <laughs> I was in LCU Division 13 by the, by the time. Which, which is? Which was just two, about 200 yards down the, the edge of, of the amphibious space. But then I Sea duty. LCU, the LCU's landing craft utility that haul, they'd haul soldiers and would they tanks go all the way across and, and everything. Yeah. That, no, they, they hauled them across in a in a in a big bigger ship. They just oh, float them in there and then pump the water out and they hauled them over there. Oh, okay. So they're uh, just small. Small boats. What were your duties on those small boats, or I didn't get on the boats. Oh, you just moved them around, or I, I, I paper? took care. I took care of the paper. <laughs> Paperwork. <laughs> okay, there it is. Man, I, you can see why he had a grin on his face when I asked what he was determined best to do, what he did best, and they said, "You thanks to Miss uh, Wilhelmus, uh, yeah. you, you, you were able to keep doing that throughout service." Back to my question, though, you flew to Japan. Where did you fly to, and where were you stationed there, and what did you do? Well, we, we flew to uh, Hawaii first. I would have stayed there, but go ahead. Well, they had they had plane travel there, so we had to spend overnight, oh, you know. that was tough. And uh, a couple of officers let us go into town. Oh, that's tough, yeah. Oh, Real it was tough, yeah. Just awful. Yeah. <laughs> so now you know you still got another leg to the journey on to Japan. I, I can't remember whether we we had to land at one of those little islands that they... That I can't pronounce and you can't probably never Well, that. Johnson Island or oh. Guam. Oh, okay. Or, you know. I thought you were talking about around Japan, but that's no. another story. That's from... That's oh, another leg. You know, mm -hmm. only back then those planes could only go so far, I guess, or whatever. And I don't know. It was, uh, it was a troop-carrying plane you sat in backwards. This. Seats were heading towards the towards the back. You didn't have any TV or comforts or you know fold down chair. Hadn't even been invented yet, I guess. Not for barely. But uh, so the real it wasn't like a comfortable airliner that you're flying no. on. And uh, when you go that far, I guess it gets a little uncomfortable. I don't know whether we even had jets then. I think it was they really were the propeller the making. Yeah, more they would be. So then you fly to Guam and the next leg and then the final leg. I think we must have flown into Tokyo. That had to be a new experience for you. Here you'd experience getting off the farm, going to San Diego, you know, going to Hawaii and stopping there. But when you got to Japan, what were your first thoughts when you got off the plane and walked on to the end of Japan? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember, huh? It had to be an experience, so it had to be well, a yeah. complete change of life. We took a train down to Yakuska. It, it, it didn't look like uh, Ireland or Portersville anymore, I it guess. It was at know? night, so we yeah. didn't yeah. see yeah. too much that time. Okay. And then where, where were you stationed there in Japan? The Yakuska Naval Base. Yakuska? Yakuska. Yakuska Naval Base in Japan. Mm -hmm. And now, were you still at the desk when yep. you were there? Right? You know, a lot of players, you know, a lot of uh, servicemen, when they're real good baseball players or basketball players, what do they do in service? They play baseball yeah. or basketball for their, you know, their <laughs> team, you know, for their branch or whatever. You were a good stenographer, evidently, and you ended up in Japan. 
Do you, did you learn any Japan or Japanese? Did you able to? Huh? Yeah, you learn enough to. Really? Well, oh, that's a tough. That, that's a tough assignment. So this little guy from Portersville or Boone Township had stepped all the way up to Japan, and you're there at Japan. Tell us some of the experiences you had there. Would you go out and to, you know for nightlife sometime or oh yeah or dinner or whatever? First time I went into town. This was 1955, I think it was. They still had open sewers. Oh, okay. <laughs> so right. the first time I went in town, I stayed about a half hour, and I was back to the <laughs> went quick. back to the base. Why? But Why? I got used to it after a while. Was there something to do with smell or? Uh, yeah. Attitude? Yeah, I guess there. But that was the old Japan. Of course, mm -hmm. it's completely different today. But you did you have to get used to that in order to uh, I get guess. out? I guess you'd have to get used to it. And what would you do for entertainment? You know, with, with the movies, you wouldn't know yeah, Japanese yeah. or anything. Or they have subtitles for you? Or would they show American uh, movies uh, on yeah. base, I guess? Oh, yeah. But it costs you a dime or a quarter of which. Even on the base? Mm -hmm. Okay. How was the food over there? Did, did they it was keep you, uh, American food, or would you get introduced to the Japanese? No, it wasn't uh, Japanese, but we had Japanese girls serving the family style. They brought it to the table and, and passed the bowls around and if they got empty, they refilled them and brought them back. That had to be pretty neat too. It was pretty good. Were they serving you their food, Japanese food or American food? No. Yeah. It was all American. Yeah. So you wouldn't eat any uh, chop suey or, uh, or not, I guess. Not unless they, they served it. Then you'd eat it though, I guess. Okay, for entertainment, were there stage shows or uh, any I don't remember musical? any. I don't remember any. They had a good illicit men's club in in town, which we'd go spend a lot of go to eat a supper there and have a couple of brews. Okay, that's a sake or what is it? That <laughs> no, but they did. They have good they Japanese did, beer. Yeah. They have some good beer, I guess, in Japan. They. Uh, only let you have six bottles of liquor a month, but a uh, fifth to CC costs a dollar thirty-five. So a non-drinking man couldn't hardly afford not to. I mean, you have to start <laughs> drinking at those prices. That's a great line. That's fantastic. Your buddy from Boone Township or from Ireland that went with you to San Diego when you enlisted was he on the same path as you? Or did you get separated, and yeah. did you ever meet each other up along the way? Did you ever run into each we other? Met in, we met in uh, Yakuska oftener than we did in San Diego. He was a communications technician. So you were kind of close together then, so you could do that. And remember now, you know, there were, and the young kids will say this, believe it or not, there were no cell phones or anything oh. to get in touch, and to track somebody down was a little more difficult than it would be today. But uh, did you ever run into anybody else from back home in your yeah. time abroad? Just in happened you, to run in into them? In Yakuska, we met Mel Bowling. You well, know, I knew Mel. I did the forward to his book. Yeah. yeah. We, we just lost him not too, yeah. too many years ago. And uh, some of the other guys that I knew in San Diego that, you know, went to ships and would dock there. And, that had to be extra special when yeah, you, you yeah. say it is indeed a small, small world. How long were you in Japan? Six months. Six months. Then what? Back to San Diego. Back to San Diego. And that was your only venture abroad, was the trip mm -hmm. to Japan. And you came back to San Diego for how many more years? Well, I, I got out in 56. 56. That was maybe another six months. Six months. So, so you had four full years that you mm -hmm. were in the Navy. Any regrets? No. Not at all. It was an enjoyable experience. Anybody. So Uncle Sam took pretty ca good care of uh, Lou, uh, Lou, right? I thought so. And uh, I think every young man would benefit from at least a couple of years. Well, that's good. We, hey, if you're looking for a poster man <laughs> to get out and campaign for you, U.S. Navy, contact Lou and he'll tell you what an enjoyable four years it was. Was there anything you learned in service that you were able to take back with you? when you got back to civilian life? Any habits or, I guess you had to grow up a lot because you were pretty young when you went in and four years of that experience, you came out. 25. 
at 25, but, uh, and I, did you find yourself uh, having people fill out a lot of forms when you're tired or anything? You know, like the military, you know, they really you go through it. What did you, did you go back to Boone Township? Yep, to the farm. To the farm, been there ever since? Mm hmm So you just? Well, the farm is in Pike County now. Dad bought, bought a farm in Pike County that uh, he had aired, he and his brother and sister had aired, and, and uh, he bought them out and uh, hired Doty, you know, from Doty Archers. Doty Archers, yeah, hey, they had the peaches and stuff down there. Yeah, see, Dad, Dad owned the Sandy Hook farm, which was sand that Doty wanted for peaches and uh, he owned this other farm that we live, lived on and uh, they swapped somehow or another. Okay. But you know, Pike County is not that far from Boone no. Township and you know it's just a few miles down the road technically mm -hmm. I guess. Okay going back now you've been out of service for a few years you know quite a few years. Do you ever sit around or you know just taking a quiet afternoon and think back to those days, do you have some fond memories that take you oh, back there yeah. to think? And they're pleasant memories, I trust. Sure. And I guess- As soon as we got out of boot camp, I went to looking for a church and I kind of figured out how to get around town a little bit. And I found a Lutheran church with a bus stop right there. This is right. San Diego? Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, they had at least a dozen or so young young girls with driver's licenses. Oh boy, okay. And Sunday dinners. <laughs> oh, that's, you can't beat that, can you? <laughs> okay. So uh, that was a good experience then. Did you uh, stay with the Lutheran Church then? Because I know there's some good Lutheran churches in the Boone Township area that's too. Right. Okay, that, oh, you had ready right hand. That's, yeah. I thought you just found one out there. Oh, no. But I know they're a very prominent. Uh, you know, St. John's. Some wonderful right, churches right. Yeah, in that area. So you're back at St. John's after all those years and uh, uh, the, the pleasant memories of service. Well, let's see, there's uh, about second year. I tried to get home at Christmas for the 30 days, you know. Sure. And I think the second year I met, went to a dance at the Calumet. I've been there. And Dottie was there. took her home and we got to be pretty good friends and we wrote letters for her. You went back but you communicated then, you wrote letters? We wrote letters for almost three years. So you were right, she was writing when you were over in Japan she too. She's got them all yet. She still has them. <laughs> now this guy, he's, you know, he's a, you know, he's a, uh, he's known for his typing and his writing and everything. <laughs> I bet you, you know, those things could sell. They, they, that'd make a novel. When they're talking about the service, uh, the, the excitement that you had in Japan, writing back to your girlfriends. We have to give me a copy of those and we might uh, write a script or something on it's that. It's a whole shoebox full. It's a whole shoebox full. <laughs> so, uh, how soon did Didn't you? Didn't even have to pay postage back then. When you're in service. Was it on the real thin paper? The, no. Uh, it wasn't. I remember. Way back, they used to have an all airmail. The mm -hmm. airmail paper was like toilet paper almost, you know, it was very, very thin. When did you get married then after you got out of service? Uh, September of 1956. September of 56. A few years ago. Family. 59 years ago. 59. Well, my wife and I have been together 50. Seven years, so we're we're catching up. Yeah, you know, we're catching up. You you hang around, we'll get there. Uh, but children, you have children. Three. Uh, my son, our firstborn was a son, and he lives across the road. Lived across the road from us, and did that. helped me farm for a good many years. And uh, was he ever in service? No. Okay. Then you but know, I did lose a nephew in Vietnam. That had to be he was, uh, was my your... oldest brother's son that was a pilot. Oh boy. And uh, C-130 was shot out from one room in, in uh, Vietnam in 72 and he had about two weeks to go yet. And you know, all of it went probably right there of everybody in your family 
you could appreciate what he had been through from your experience in service. You, you knew, you know, you, you had an understanding of the time spent in service and you lost your nephew. It was and real you, hard for my brother and his wife. Well, I can imagine, but I, I'm sure it was good for you to be there as a veteran to console him and get him through it. What about your third as a son or a daughter? Uh, next one is, uh, he was severely retarded at birth and he lives in uh, Bedford in a nursing home. And he's always been a special, very and special child to you, I'm sure. We had a stillbirth after him and uh, the fourth one was our daughter and she was perfect. And Still is. Still is. Okay. <laughs> and she's giving you some grandchildren, I guess. Uh-huh. So uh, have any of your, your grandchildren been in service or so far? Uh -huh. Are you the only you the only one? Okay. And uh, you know, we've we've kind of had the same thing. It involves the Navy. I, you know, I've had four, four brothers and uh, my brother Bill's the only one that was in service, was in the Navy. And we've got I don't know how many grandchildren and stuff, a lot of them involved. The only one. My brother Bill was in there. So you and Bill have some connections there, you know, with that, that uh, similarities. In other words, I know so many people who have come from a military family. You know, their, their dad was in the Army all his life, and, you know, they were called Army brats. You know, they lived everywhere. And same way with the Navy, and same with my brother's son. He's lived in I don't know how many different towns and went to how many different schools. But that's all part of it when they do move around when you're a lifetime, you know, server uh, for life in the Navy or the Army. Or the I, wished, I wished I had requested sea service at some point along the Why? Line. Tell me why. Go I ahead. don't know. I don't know. Uh -huh. Just the only time I was on a ship was to eat Christmas dinner with my brother-in-law <laughs> <laughs> on the Hornet. Oh, okay. And I had civilian clothes on and in the officer's mess and I was I was the most uncomfortable I had I had ever been, I think. Really? Why? Well, I thought they might ask me what I do. <laughs> <laughs> what is an enlisted man doing in the officers? They wonder what you're doing there. But you were there. But you were the probably had more service experience than any of them in there at that time. I decided these guys lived a lot better than we did. <laughs> it took you took me that long to find that out. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> you mentioned something now. The, the four years you spent in service, most of it, as you said, in San Diego, but some in Japan. Uh, overall, how was the food? You know, you hear a lot of people say, "Man, we got the, you know, you know the." the food that you get in the army is kind of tough, whatever. But I, uh, my brother never complained. He was in the Navy. I How was the food? I didn't complain much. And I'm a pretty picky eater. And you're a picky eater and you didn't complain about the, the uh, food that you were served in the Navy. Had it to do all over again, would you do the same thing? Would you go back with the Navy? Yeah, I wouldn't mind it. But you'd ask for more sea duty. <laughs> uh, but then they'd take you away from the desk. But San Diego's just pretty nice. I left Evansville on an airplane on December 9th or January 9th, whatever it was, and it was nine degrees below zero. And I got to San Diego in the morning, put on my summer suit, and went to church. Good for you. <laughs> and you could go. 40 miles up into the Sierras and go snow sledding if you will. Well, Lou, it looks like thanks to the U.S. Navy and your time in service, you've had a most interesting life. Even though it was only for the four years, it affected you the rest of your life in a good I way. So. In a good way. And as we wrap things up here now, what would you say to a young man today, just got out of school, be it high school or college, and he's looking to the future and he's considering service? What would you advise him? I think it's a good idea, mainly because you learn to work, you learn to take orders, and as you move up the ladder, you can give orders. You learn how to do that. So I think it's a real good. It's a good experience. Good experience. Any boy or girl getting yeah. out of school, you would. Now that's one difference from when you were in service and service today is the co-ed uh, atmosphere, which I think is wonderful. You know, it's just, uh, it's given us some uh, extra special people that are involved in the military of our country. 
Well, Lou, I had a pleasure of meeting Lou just a few weeks ago. He was presented with a special award during a Veterans Day program here. And tell us what that award was, Lou. National Defense Medal. Isn't that fantastic? I say it was a medal that was given for Korea, for the service during the Korean period. You're being a little modest about it. It's a very special award. Not everyone gets one, and you got it. And, I think uh, everybody got one. Probably well, didn't. I only saw the two of you that got it the day I was here. So uh, we'll leave it at that. But uh, Lou, thanks for on behalf of everybody. Thanks for the service to your country. Uh, you did yourself, your family, and your country proud with your service in the U.S. Navy. Congratulations, and uh, uh, many, many years to come uh, enjoyment. I hope you get out on the farm and have a great time. Thank uh, you so much. I get out there every week in the summer to mow. Okay, that's great. It keeps you young. It keeps you young. For Lou Wiseman, I'm Jerry Birch. Thanks for listening to this fascinating interview from a veteran that uh, certainly makes me feel, made me feel a lot safer back when you were serving. Thank you so much, Lou. Thank you.